be be cautious, young people, about party affiliations of any kind, because again, you can get sucked into that bubble and lose your conscience. Uh, and uh, like and, me and him wearing matching shirts today. <laughs> yeah, we just we're, 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 now, we're on a cult right here, yeah. the history cult. You want? You know what? I've actually started. I've thought about starting my own religion. <laughs> well, I didn't think this topic would come up. Yeah. Please do tell. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, why not? Really? I mean, I have, I have, most of you know that have had me in class. I have my own calendar, right? And I've got holidays and all that stuff that goes along with me. So Is it's that a calendar centered around your birthday. It's, yeah, it's centered around my birthday. So if other people can have calendars, then I thought, well, why not? I can get my own. So the idea then, if you want to take a progression into that step, is to get, you know, mm, disciples of some sort who will listen to what you're saying. And then, I mean, I haven't performed any miracles yet, but I don't know that I can't. Like, that hasn't been proven that I can't. So maybe that'll happen sooner or later, and then I get more people to follow me. And or at least I can convince people maybe that I did create some miracles. And then people go, dang, that guy's got some interesting things to say. And he can like walk on water, perhaps. I heard him say, I heard somebody say he could walk on water. And next thing you know, it's a freaking movement. And then it becomes a religion. Maybe you take over the entire world. That would be fun. The previous message was not endorsed by Lakeside, Lake no, the school no, district, or any affiliate. Completely tongue in cheek. <laughs> so don't write nasty letters. Don't call Mr. Cook. I'm just kidding. Kind of. But <laughs> I'm through trying to predict what Trump thinks or does. Yeah. Has there ever been a president that has changed politics, culture, whatever, without a war or some sort of, as much as Trump has? You think about presidents that come along and in their administration, politics has completely changed or society has completely changed one way or another. But they didn't like, they didn't face a, they all face crisis of some sort, crises. Has, is Trump the only one who hasn't really faced a major domestic or foreign crisis, but already has changed the, everything completely? Mm. I think we've had change um, exacted in that way. That there's, a, there's a crisis going on, but it doesn't relate to the change happening. So mm. you, you've, got, you've got Kennedy and you've got LBJ who do say, a lot just, of for civil say, rights. I was going to say Johnson. And, there, and there's a lot of, you know, the Vietnam is happening and, and the whole Cold War. But those, those internal civil rights things that were changing, that's separate from the, those kind of crises and conflicts. So I, I think we have. I think we've actually seen a lot... Bigger but change. Trump has never. But Trump's not facing that. He's not. He doesn't have a Vietnam, really. He has he, Afghanistan. Yeah, but I mean, have you heard much about it? I mean, I, I hear a little. Not, but it's not like Vietnam. Yes. There's not anti-war protest in the streets for Afghanistan. We have kind of pushed. Put, well, to me, we can we've argue about why that, that is. Right, and yeah, you could argue that. But it's like the things that he's. We've haven't had that major. You know, I mean, Vietnam was a, when Johnson, I mean, he chose not to be president again because it was such a big deal. Because it was televised. Nobody's televising the, the war in Afghanistan. That's true. Maybe it doesn't sell. The war in Afghanistan is old news. They've chosen, and it no, no, I, my opinion is they've chosen not to sell it. And mm -hmm. I don't know from what directive, but it's just not been, since we've been there, they've been really tight-lipped about what types of things are happening there. Well, where does, what's who's not choosing happening. not to sell it? There's uh, what. When's the last time you saw a true media presentation of what's happening in Afghanistan, from any angle, from left, right, center? I know, anybody. but don't you think if it got clicks, if it got eyeballs, they would do it? Like, if is in that what media is all about? Is how many clicks? That's why they talk why, about Trump every day. Why are they avoiding it? It's obviously an ongoing conflict. Our longest war, sixteen years and counting. I think America's tired of it. I don't think people want to know about it, and who cares? So I think uh, unless you have somebody over there. So you're fighting. saying as a society, we've just gotten complacent to the fact of, of, of the idea America. of warfare, and so we just ignore the fact that thousands of people have been killed in this process, and we'll, yes. and there's no end in sight. Yes, that's why rarely do presidents have successful second terms, mm -hmm. because America gets tired of whoever's in charge, and let's have somebody different. Um, I just, I think that's, I think at first it was big. We, it was, we were getting revenge for 9-11. Then we went into Iraq and we got a bad taste in our mouth from the Middle East. And Obama kind of got us out of that. And we just kind of, I mean, I don't know if anybody's interested in it. I, I mean, obviously as history teachers, we definitely are. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying the average person that just goes to work every day, comes home. I don't think they're, what's going on in Afghanistan today? They're just, well, I mean, cares now? look at, if what, it was more, if it was more well produced into their consciousness through media, wouldn't more people care though? Yeah. Out of sight, out of mind is kind of the idea. I mean, it has been a little bit out of sight, out of mind. I think part of this is though, is that in terms of the number of troops on the ground and the number of people that it has affected, it, it's just so much smaller. We have not had a draft for this 16 year long war. Uh, you know what, that may be the kicker right that there. You know, because, and I'm looking around at, you know, the, the classes that we've got with us today. And most of these children in here are, were not born when this war began. They have grown up in this war environment. And 
I'm looking at how doing. much they're paying attention to us right now, and they clearly don't care. <laughs> Unless they are thinking about the military and, and as that a, as a potential career. Or they have family members. Yeah, if they missed that on the 90s. You know, man. Oh, y'all mm-hmm. missed it. What a great decade. All right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's great music. Everybody was chill. Bill Clinton, you know, we're just, we're just rolling right through the 90s. Everything was great. Boom. Millennium. <laughs> Killed us. <laughs> About time you were born. Complacency. I think so. I think Afghanistan is just, nobody, everybody's tired of it. Let's move on to another subject, even though it's super important. Good question. Know. How many of you guys can still ride a bike or at all? Can you? Oh, I'm impressed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Majority. Yeah. How about this? I haven't ridden a bike since sixth grade. I had a bad accident, got a big scar on my leg. Look, I said, all right, that's good. All right, no, t- all right, tell that story. How'd you crack? Because everybody's got a cool bike wreck story. Right? I was on a crazy bike that if you pulled the the pedals backwards, it hit it hit a brake. Yeah, you know, sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So oh. I'm going full tilt down a hill, and one of the cables got wrapped around the thing. <laughs> I don't hardly remember. I know I landed like an airplane on these on my teeth <laughs> on asphalt. Half of this tooth is fake. From sixth grade, and if you remember sixth grade, you, I hadn't had these teeth long, uh, so I go huh, huh, sparks flying. <laughs> I go in, my grandmother and mom are in there. My grandmother was down visiting, and I go, mom, and of course blood, and they had to pick gravel out of my lip, and my and I was fine because it was kind of numb, and of course you know I got a chip tooth, and my grandmother looked and said, and she was talking to my mom, Jeannie, Jeannie, and looked at me and went, oh, and then I went. Oh, what? And then I start crying. She starts crying. Everybody's crying. They run me to the hospital and they pick gravel out. And then I had this, these, you know, I've got pictures of me. Just, I haven't ridden a bike since. So, <laughs> there you go. I don't, I don't have any real punchline to it other than, ouch. Yeah, no, no free bikes for you. <laughs> have yeah. a fake tooth right there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, when we were kids, if you had a bike and a board and a brick, you were an act, uh, you were a stuntman because you could start yeah. jumping over stuff, you know? Like, we were always trying to jump over right. things this was when parents didn't care so just yeah they they sent you out in the yard and then it, you were on your own and yeah. you just grouped together with other kids and said how dangerous can we yeah. be my, my, my mother actually <laughs> locked us out of the house especially in the summertime she's like get out this is a direct quote get out of my house that's right lock the door behind us i don't want to see you till lunch and then after that i don't want to see you till the street lights come on <laughs> yeah she was... forced us out and so we roamed the neighborhood that's basically what we did <laughs> fortunately we had enough kids that were about my age, and we just kind of, you know, but you're right. What do we do? I don't know. Climb that tree. Get on that roof. Throw rocks Try to each knock other. each other off the roof now that you're up there, you know? Yeah, th- rock fights. It's like Lord of the Flies back then. It was just a bobble <laughs> yeah. of the fittest. Sure. Oh, I can't think of anybody that's an egomaniac. Well, the guy, uh, okay, I don't, I'm not going to say this right. Um, the guy who ran off with Cleopatra. Oh, Mark Antony? Yeah, he's pretty... What did you think about that story after I told it? I thought it was crazy. Yeah. I, don't, I would never like run but off. But it was all leave. about love. Yeah, not really. <laughs> I think you just... Oh, you I don't think, think it was, was? I think it was more like lust over love, yeah. yeah. Like, did she really make a snake batter? Is that... Yeah, yeah. Why? Yeah. Oh, that's... Yeah. A, okay, you want to talk about bad rather than going, to, Rather than go well, back to Rome, they were going to drag her back yeah. and torture her publicly. Oh. And so she, rather, she checked out rather There's than, not a tall tree where they were at? I mean, you can't... She was, she, she was, she was, yeah, she was falling a sword, something yeah. self. Uh, I mean, she was in, you know, house arrest. You ever looked at a venomous snake bite? What happens? Yeah. Like you she like, bit, it like looks like, yeah, I just stuff. have to. Yeah. yeah it, that's, oh. yeah. So that's, that is one of the craziest sort of love affair stories that we've been able to tell. Yeah. Uh, the clear like story. Yeah. What I didn't understand about that story is how she could like kill off herself. Mm-hmm. Like, so she didn't have to go through the torture, but she didn't think about her kids. Like she just let her kids be taken back and get tortured and killed. Yeah, I that's yeah, the the I didn't like that. It's like how could you just kill yourself and completely forget about your kids? Like I would have thought about them first and then I wonder if it was a desperation move because they were doomed either way. Yeah, um yeah, but I'll, still, I don't know. And I you kind of also wonder because of the infant mortality rate how people really felt about their kids. I don't think they have How the test were you with we... them because they might not grow up anyway? Yeah, that's something to think about, I suppose. Might have been a different culture psychology. Yeah, you know, it's possible that as as the pharaoh, she might not have had much association with her children to begin with. Honestly, there may have been other people who were in charge of raising them, nursing them, uh, educating them. Oh, yeah. It's possible. Now, again, I don't know her, that part of her story specifically, but that's, a lot of royalty ends up doing that. You know, the other people end up raising their children, and yeah. they see them when necessary. Yeah, because I was like, I was like, um, my mom, I know for a fact that, like, she would do anything to make sure that I was okay. Sure, so, yeah. Like, like, sending out her people with the kill to make sure that she died, my mom probably would have like made sure like that I got killed off easily and then worried about herself later on. So that you weren't. Yeah. 
suffering. Yeah. yeah. I didn't suffer and then she made sure I wasn't suffering. Mm -hmm. I don't know, as a mother, I feel like that, that should have been her first priority instead of just letting the snake kill her. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a that's a difficult part of the story. And again, I don't I don't know enough about that moment to to know whether she what options she actually had. You know, mm -hmm. was there a way for her to be able to protect her children at that moment? Maybe not. Maybe maybe it was just, you know, maybe she had to deal with her own story and, and whatever happens to them. Maybe she just hopes for the best. I don't know. My name's Kayla Streetsy, and apparently there's been something going around the news about Planet X and how it's gonna like crush <laughs> into the world and kill us oh, all. Oh, you mentioned that. The mysterious yeah, what, Planet that? X. What? I have no idea. Uh, that is just a bunch of hype. No, that's, I, I don't put any kind of credence in that. Now, are there things out in the universe that may smash into us eventually? Yes, that's a thing. Is there some random planet that nobody's been charting that has broken free from its solar system is going to come crash into us tomorrow? I, I tend to doubt that. No, so I heard NASA talking about there's over like a thousand, mainly asteroids that they're kind of got their eye on. There could be some that slip through the cracks that we don't see coming until a few months before. They probably won't tell us. Uh, you know, until it's all, all over. Right, well, that, no, let's talk about that. That's an interesting thing. If there is asteroid X or planet X or whatever we're going to call it, would you want to know? No, I wouldn't tell people. And if I was the government and I did know, would I tell anybody? Because you're, you're looking at panic, probably, and that means suffering. Your economy so would, would Would you rather just crash. let it just happen and be over or yeah. let people sort of freak out and then do the nasty things that people do. To I, I say we are dishonest. I think we should be dishonest with the public. We can't <laughs> handle it. It would be mobocracy. It would be craziness. I don't think, yeah. Be to, looting, to, burning, and stealing. If it's real, I don't think anybody should actually tell about yeah, it. Yeah, don't tell me. Let that thing land right on my big forehead <laughs> and uh, just end it without even, I'm just walking, mm, that's a great day, boom, done. I don't, I don't want to survive one of those. You don't want to kind of survive. <laughs> well, I don't, well, You'll have to live in a cave for the rest of your life. The survivability, that's, sort of a secondary point. I'm saying that the pre-knowledge of some sort of impending doom would drive people mad and they would do yeah, that would be worse. things because they know it's about to be over. And I just don't trust people enough. You went back to it a while ago, mobocracy. Like, that would be worst case scenario more so than just some sort of Armageddon moment. The, the pre-Armageddon would be worse than the Armageddon. Yeah, well, like, what if you could, you could find out the day you were going to die? Would you want to know? Some people say, oh, you should know. That way you live life to the fullest. You know what? I, I'm good. You know, I mean, what if it was coming up on the date? <laughs> you know, you're a year away. Um, what am I going to do today? Uh, I can't imagine, you know, because people, that would turn people crazy. I wouldn't want to, just, that would hey, be just let it be a mystery. Yeah. Even a surprise would be great. I mean, if it's going to happen, I don't want to slowly go. No. I want to go fast if I go. If I go. I don't think I will. I'm, I'm the one exception. You know, the, you, you have that, one, that little thought in the back of your mind being like, well, everybody else dies, but... Somehow, I, if, if I'm going to survive no, this If I knew that, that I had something that was like totally unsurvivable and it was going to get to be where I was in some sort of debilitated state and I was going to be this massive burden on my family, it's going to be this long, drawn-out, you know, you know, gut-wrenching sort of goodbye and it's going to put a massive amount of, of, uh, of uh, financial burden on them and emotional strain and all that stuff and I wouldn't want to go through crap like that. What I would do, I'd just go find some. I'd probably, and I've said this before to other people, I'd probably climb to the top of the tallest building I'd find wrap myself in an American flag, set myself on fire, and jump. <laughs> Why not? And on that note, I guess that is the podcast, everybody. I mean, you can't talk. I can't talk that. <laughs>